better? Yeah. All right. <coughs> Good evening and welcome to the select board meeting. Today is February 19th, 2020. We are airing on Comcast Channel 22 and Verizon Channel 33. Tonight is a special meeting of the select board to solicit feedback from the public regarding what they are looking for in a new police chief. I appreciate the town manager laid out the hiring process and timeline at our last meeting. It's unfortunate that we didn't have this public listening session sooner, but I appreciate everyone taking the time to come out tonight. The agenda for tonight is as follows. We will begin with a listening session. Working with Ann Landry on planning this evening, we decided that a neutral third party would be best to moderate the public feedback portion of the meeting. We made the decision to ask our town, town moderator, Alan Foles, to facilitate the public session. At 9.30, the board will hold the confirmation and then we will adjourn. If public session ends sooner, we will take the vote at that time. At this point, I would like to hand it over to Alan Foltz. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alan Foles, and I have been asked to mediate the listening session of tonight's select board meeting. As you may know, I am town moderator, but I am not here in that capacity. Town meeting is the legislative branch of the government, and the select board and town manager represent the executive. Instead, I have been asked to help out tonight, not because of my position, but because of experience I've gained through being moderator. This is the select board's meeting. I did not volunteer for this position, but when asked, I felt I could not refuse. The select board chair asked me if I would consider running this portion of the meeting. I said I would if the vice chair was on board with it, as the gavel would normally pass to him if the chair steps aside. He said yes, and I have heard unofficially from the remaining board members that they all feel that it is a good idea. Keep in mind, I am a neutral party. I am here to make sure the meeting runs smoothly and serves its purpose. I am not a member of the board, and I will not be able to answer any questions beyond anything technical about running the meeting. Let me explain the agenda and the ground rules. We have two microphones set up, one in each aisle. To speak, you must line up behind either one of the microphones, and the chair will alternate between them. Uh, if if uh, you're not able to get to one of the microphones, these are portable, and we can bring it to you. Uh, speakers are limited to two minutes each, and we will time them. We have a timer. Mark will hold up a yellow. Uh, sign when there's, uh, was it one minute left? One minute. one minute left and red when your time is up. And we're going to try to be very strict on that so we can get as many speakers as possible. Um, also, as much as practical, speakers who have not spoken yet will have priority of those who would wish to speak again. So please keep that in mind when you're getting in line. As we do in town meeting, we are going to stick to the subject at hand. Please do not go off topic, do not attack personalities, and do not engage in politics. I know we're just two weeks out from an election, but we're here to talk about uh, what the town is looking for in a police chief. The listening session has a hard end time of 9.30 p.m. If we run out of speakers before that, we'll end before that, but it will end at 9.30 in any case. Per the select board, the following are the subjects for discussion. What qualities would you like to see in our new police chief? What has your experience been with the Reading Police Department? What types of community police initiatives or programs would you like to see a new chief pursue? And anything along that line is perfectly okay. And with that, I believe we are now ready. Do we have any questions? Yes, Ms. O'Neill. Um, are you? Uh, could you oh, I'm sorry. use the microphone? Yes, Mary Ellen O'Neill. Are you asking people to identify themselves by name, address, combination, or what? Thank very you. Very good point. You should uh, uh, state your name and your address, just so we know who is speaking. Thank you very much, Mary Ellen. Further questions? Do we have one? Do I miss it? Oh, here we are. Okay. <coughs> Oh, we had lines up here. I'm sorry. I was looking over here. Go ahead. Why don't we start with you, and then we'll pop over here. All right. Eileen Letario, Deborah Drive. I have three points. First point, I wholeheartedly support the confirmation of Deputy Chief David Clark to the position of chief. After a vigorous vetting process and the town manager's decision to bring his name forward for confirmation, the select board should confirm David Clark tonight without delay. 
Second point, regarding the community police initiatives, as a graduate of the Citizens Police Academy, I support a continuation of this excellent program, Understanding Through Education. This program covers every topic related to the safety and well-being of our residents and culminates in a ride-along program with an officer similar to Jacob Berman's outstanding documentary. I was, I am, and I always will be a strong proponent of officers carrying firearms. I urge any uninformed select board member or members to educate themselves to the dangerous situations police might face every day necessitating carrying a gun for our safety and protection. And lastly, I strongly urge that any select board member who publicly expresses bias and prejudice toward our RPD should recuse yourself from voting in these proceedings tonight. Thank you. Now we'll switch to the open. I would ask that we not have any kind of demonstrations until the meeting is over. It, that way we can, we can speed things up. We'll start over here. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Jeffrey Coram, Ridge Road. I will start by saying I have had very positive inter interactions with Acting Chief Clark. He invited art students from the high school to paint a mural in the interview room at the station, and my elder daughter was involved in that project. She and I both found him to be approachable and enthusiastic. Of course, there's more to choosing the police chief than one family's opinion, and there's more to it than how well a candidate knows anyone else in town, elected or otherwise. We should be able to say we picked the best candidate. This serves the chief as well as the town. If someone disagrees with his policies, priorities, or handling of a situation, that person should not be able to claim the chief only got the job because he had an in. And a thorough process can well take several months. As to what I would look for in a chief, I'd like to know that the candidate supports the school resource officers, in particular having a second SRO that the recent override allowed us to add. I'd like to know how the candidate plans to address vaping. Walking Oakland Road this weekend, I saw a lot of empty jewel and puff boxes, despite the recent state ban. I'd like to know the candidate's thoughts on ring cameras and other private surveillance. Would the Reading Police Department join Amazon's promotion campaign to sell more of these so they would have access to more cameras? Based on the description of the process and the assessment center, I am satisfied that Acting Chief Clark would make an excellent chief, and I would just ask the select board and our town manager to consider my questions as part of the goals as the new chief starts his position. I appreciate the town manager's description of the police chief hiring process as found in the packet for last week's meeting. It seems thorough, but if I had been on the select board and, not, and gotten that as my first update on the process, I probably would not have been ready to vote on approving the town manager's selection that same evening. I appreciate the chairperson giving the public this opportunity and making sure that the full select board has time to consider the process. Thank you. Okay, I will come back over here, then I'll go back over here. We'll the line is a little bit longer over here. Yes. Hi, John Lippett, Mineral Street. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the select board for having this listening session. I think it's very important for the public to have input into this very important decision. Uh, my experience with the Reading Police Department has been very positive. I once had a, a landscaper who had threatened me. I called them, they came to my door, took my statement. When they researched it, they discovered this individual had, had made other threats and was actually on probation. They had me down to the police station to do a written statement, and then I actually went to court twice to testify to make sure this, this person was staying on probation. Fortunately, I didn't have to testify because it was um, settled out of court. So very positive um, interaction with them. I have three programs I'd like to suggest. One, I'd like the... Um, department and the new chief to very seriously look at take, having electric police cars. Mm -hmm. uh, they accelerate very quickly, they're quiet, so they're stealthy when police need that. They have less cost for maintenance and fuel. And if they're idling while you're monitoring um, an intersection or, or uh, uh, rush hour at the train station, they aren't emitting fumes. Two other uh, points. One is the diversity in the department has been increasing. I think we need to continue to increase that. Uh, and I look forward to the um, chief continuing that effort. And finally, I'd like to note that the, uh, assuming it is Deputy Clark Chief, uh, his tenure with the department goes back 25 years to a point in time where there were some unfortunate things in the Reading Police Department, including a reputation for stopping drivers for, while driving while black. Uh, I'm glad to see that this has changed, and I hope the new 
chief will continue that and make sure that that does not rear its ugly head again. Qualities I'd like to see in the chief are openness and um, a commitment to public participation. For example, sharing information on the above three programs I've suggested on a regular basis. Thank you very much. All right, we'll come back to this side for the next question. Carrie Mattel, Longfellow Road. Qualities in a police chief. Ability to lead effectively with attention to detail. Set goals for yourself in the department. Active listener that is non-judgmental and provides undivided attention. Remains neutral, not overreaching the job description. Trust communication. Trust that the information that will be shared, that is allowed to be shared, will be shared within the confines of the law. I respect that not all information can be shared. Accessibility and um, visible as an active community member. Be honest and have integrity. Admit when wrong, but stand tall when others attack. Commit to your actions. Evolve and adapt. Evolve in the role of chief and make it what you envision while adapting to the needs of our community as a whole. I would like to say I support the town manager's selection and Dave Clark as the next police chief in Reading and hope the select board does as well. Thank you. Come back over here. Hi, I'm Laura Wilson, 24 Bay State Road. Um, first of all, I want to thank the select board and the town manager for providing the opportunity to make public comment on what we want in a police chief. Uh, I think it's really important and I appreciate the Reading Police Department's uh, patience um, in allowing us to help um, make this decision uh, and giving our our input and obviously from the how full this room is I can see it's important to other people too um, I'm a mom of two children with autism when my son was very small he displayed some very unsafe behaviors uh, running into the street and things like that the police were called once when a concerned neighbor um, saw this and uh, as, as was appropriate and I found the officers who answered the call to be sensitive and thorough making sure that my child was safe as well as understanding the challenges my family faced uh, we're very thankful for that experience, and I, I thank them directly here tonight, who, anyone who is here. Uh, in terms of my hopes for the future of the department, um, it's sort of in the same category. I hope the Reading Police Department will continue its work with whatever form the new human uh, relations uh, group. Uh, I know it's going to change, um, and I hope that they continue to support that group, um, not just for my disabled children, but as well as um, anyone else who may not have every advantage. Uh, I hope they will continue to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Brown? Good evening. For those that may not know me, my name is Bill Brown. Uh, there was no absolute reason for us to be here tonight. The town of Reading adopted the Home Rule Charter in 1986, explicitly says that the town manager, not the board of selectmen, not the school committee, but the town manager shall present a candidate for the Chief, police chief and the selectmen either have yes or no. This process has gone on too long. It's time for the Board of Selectmen to abide by the charter which each and every member that is, serves this town has to, and they have failed to do so. Thank you. Again, again I put Again, I ask that we do not do that so we can keep the uh, lines moving. Yes. Jamie Maughan, Woburn Street, Precinct 4. First, I want to thank the select board for holding this meeting tonight. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be heard. I wish we'd had more and had it earlier because the police chief is such a, an important position. In my opinion, Reading has a fine police department. I think that even though we do have a fine police department, that doesn't mean we shouldn't work to make it better. In this state, we thought we had a fine state police department. And look at the mess that they have. The state has decided to try and improve the state police department to do two things. One, not draw the head of the state police from the internal state police. They found that that culture didn't work, and that if you drew from internally in the state police, they couldn't objectively look at their employees. The second thing the state thought they should do to improve the state police department was to have more civilian oversight. I think going forward, we should lead, learn from the state and do those two things. I've had both some very positive and less than positive experiences with the Reading Police. Positive experiences, we thought we had an intruder in our house. And of course, 
the worthless husband wasn't there. So my wife called the Reading police and they couldn't be more helpful. On the other side, we had a guest at our house for dinner and she called an Uber to take her back to her hotel in Boston. Unfortunately, the Uber driver was a person of color. A Reading police officer pulled up immediately behind that Uber driver in front of our house, claimed his license was expired, which wasn't true because it didn't happen. And when my wife came out to help the young woman who was getting the Uber ride, the police officer told her to go inside or he'd arrest the Uber driver. Okay, we complained time three times, never got satisfaction. Okay. Thank you. And I'll stay on this side for one more before we buff over. Right, uh, John Sullivan, Weston Road. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the select board and the town, ma town manager for providing this opportunity for public comment in, into what we'd like to see in the police chief. Uh, and also for your careful consideration of the comments that you received tonight. This is a very important decision that will affect everybody who lives, works, or travels through Reading for hopefully many years to come. And I'm glad that everyone involved recognizes the magnitude of this decision and is giving the time and attention that they feel it needs to make sure that the decision that is made is the right one. Uh, one program from the police department that I feel doesn't get enough credit is the uh, pizza and ice cream citations for bike helmets. Uh, I've been a fan of this program since I was in elementary school at Kilham. Uh When I was eight years old, I had a run with a car on my bike. Uh, had I not been wearing a helmet that day, I wouldn't be here right now. I hope that this program continues uh, through the next chief and every chief after that's tenure uh, until you know, as long as writing exists, I hope that program continues. Uh, I hope that the new chief will work diligently to foster a culture of openness and transparency within the department. I hope that the chief makes it a priority to keep the people of Reading informed about the issues relating to the police force and seeks to improve the public's trust in the department by welcoming public scrutiny and oversight. I also hope that the new chief welcomes constructive criticism and views it as an opportunity to improve the job that his or her department does and as an as a opportunity to show the public that the department recognizes and understands their concerns. Thank you for your time and good luck with your decision. Okay, on this side. Mike Monahan, Bancroft Ave, Reading. I encourage you to unanimously vote tonight to appoint David Clark as Reading's new Chief of Police for the following reasons. David Clark has pr a proven track record predicated on actual experience in our town over the past number of months. Promoting from within our police department Police Department provides a message to our policemen and women that hard work and dedication can result in promotion within the Reading Police Department, contrasted to hiring from the outside of our community. David Clark has grown up in Reading, has been a good and faithful servant of our police department since 1995. As such, he has a beneficial and deep knowledge of our community. David has earned numerous awards and citations throughout his career. He's an armed services veteran. He's been vetted and is supported by our town manager whose judgment we can and should trust. Selecting David Clark as the new chief this evening will be a positive step towards remediating the drama, division, and turmoil that is occurring in our community. We've been without a chief for an extended length of time and tonight is the night to make things right with our police officers and with our police chief candidates and with our town manager and with our citizens. Thank you. Uh, on this side. Karen Clark, Ash Street. I would first like to thank all involved for allowing this time of public comment. The chief of police is one of the most influential positions in any town and the importance of the relationship between a police department and the residents it serves and protects cannot be overstated. My daughter is a Daisy level Girl Scout, and I recently accompanied her troop on a tour of the Reading Police Department. I could not have been more impressed with the kindness and patience displayed towards the girls. The officer leading the tour thoughtfully answered what turned into a full deluge of questions, but it was one answer in particular that I especially appreciated. One Daisy asked a question along the lines of, what happens if there is a bad guy? And the officer responded that most people are not bad. They are just people who made a mistake or a bad decision, although they will have to face the consequences of their actions. The compassion in this answer became especially noticeable a few minutes later when another child shared that a family member had been in jail and the officer was able to gently remind her 
that this didn't make her family member a bad person. I know that the world is not as simple as we sometimes present it to our children, and that there are times that police officers must bravely face individuals who do mean them harm. However, I have to imagine that the majority of calls in this town involve people who are not bad people, but just made a mistake or a bad decision. An underlying attitude of trust and respect between the residents and police officers is crucial to maintaining a sense of community. I would hope our future chief of police continues to enforce this attitude. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next Thank you, uh, Chuck Robinson, uh, Precinct 4, and uh, current chair of the school committee. Uh, I, just, I just have a few points. Uh, first thing uh, I'd like to say is, uh, you know, I applaud the process. It was very thorough, and I was uh, fortunate enough to be asked to be on the uh, assessment center. So I, the process that happened before that brought forth the five very good candidates. They were all very good candidates, but I can sit here and tell everyone in this room tonight and the Board of Selectmen that uh, Deputy Chief Clark stood head and shoulders above those, uh, and I applaud the town manager's recommendation to hire that, uh, hire him. Uh, further to that, uh, I can say, and, and maybe you'd call it insider uh, knowledge, but uh, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, Deputy Clark in, in my capacity on the school committee on in several occasions, and uh, he's just been excellent, thoughtful uh, in a difficult time when we had he was acting as an interim and 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 trying to keep the department together, and he just came right in and uh, his feet were right on the ground and and uh, I uh, look forward to a positive vote tonight to, to work with him going forward. He'll be an excellent asset to this community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Select Board. My name is Alan Bollier. I have lived in Reading for 53 years, and I know this is the first time that I can ever remember that there was a community forum for what we think a police chief should be. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'm just saying, lived here for 53 years, we'll use that as my, I know a lot about Reading, not as much as Bill Brown, but I know a lot about Reading. <laughs> okay, um, things that I would look for in a police chief, someone that remains calm in stressful situations. Another thing that I would think of a police chief is someone looks at the goals of the community some of it also looks at the goals of the department, but also takes into account the goals of the community and the police department and puts them ahead of their own goals. These sort of qualities are the qualities that I have seen that Deputy Chief Clark has used in a little more than a year he has been as the interim deputy chief, as the interim chief. So I would actually advocate that we promote Deputy Chief Clark to Chief Clark at the close of the, the evening. Thank you. On this side, James Bonazzoli, 100 Grove Street, former Board of Selectmen member. Um, for me, what I'm looking for in a police chief is somebody who can work with the administration. There's a lot of work that goes on in the town that needs to happen in collaboration. I think that was proven that we have that collaboration when our town manager appointed Deputy Chief um, David Clark. I'm also looking for a police chief who can work with his own staff, bring them up, bring their skills up, and their qualifications. I think that was demonstrated by the force that came out the other night, which I, I want to make a comment. I was in Europe when this all happened. And to have to see it come over my phone and the town that I'm lived in, living in get the press that we got was truly unacceptable. I know everybody feels that, but it did get to that level. Thirdly, I'm looking for a police chief who will work with the community and, and help us improve in areas that we need to improve. We still have a bad drug addiction 
in this area, whether it's alcohol or opiate drugs. And our CASA has always had a great sponsorship and partnership with the police. David Clark has always been part of that and side by side. I recommend that we move forward with uh, making him the chief of police and in honoring in, in what Bob LaSure has done and what this town has promoted. Thank you. And we turn to the other side. <coughs> Again, I ask that we, we do not we refrain from clapping for now so we can get as many questions in as possible. I, I, yes, I didn't clap. <laughs> My name is Bob Hayes. I live at 739 Pearl Street in Reading. And not to one-up the other gentleman, but I've been here over 60 years. Um, <clears throat> and I have lived in Reading a lot. Newcomer, and I'm working on chasing Bill. Um, unfortunately, I've been very friendly with a lot of police officers and have known several chiefs, both personally and professional, in my tenure here. Thanks to the exceptional town management, the citizens of Reading have been extremely fortunate to be protected by such an exemplary group of competent and professional men and women in service to our community. And Dave Clark is cut very much from that same cloth. Without warning, Dave found himself sitting behind the chief's desk without any additional compensation, but with all the additional headaches and responsibilities. And Dave filled that role nearly with perfection. What do I want in a chief? Ideally, someone who is committed, not just involved. And I like to liken that to a ham and egg sandwich. You know, the chicken's involved, but the pig's committed. But <clears throat> it would be nice for a person, man or woman, who has roots in this community, someone who is vested, and looks out for the best interests of his town, this town, or her town. I want someone whose kids go to school here, who knows my name and my kids' names, someone who shares my joys and feels some of my pain. I ask the board, is Dave Clark not that person? Forestalling the ratification of Dave to advance politics, whatever ide ideologies, is egregious and abusive, and to say the least, not the one reading way. Anything short of unanimous vote of confidence from the board to ratify Bob Latch's nominee, Dave Clark, should be viewed by all the citizens as shameful and disrespectful towards everyone involved in the vetting process. As my father always said, the wheels of justice grind true in exceeding spall. Thank you. Back to the other side. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Oh, wait, do I say that now? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, I want to thank the select board and the town manager for making um, this opportunity available to talk about what we're looking for in a police chief, um, and then also sharing some of our experiences and, re and recommendations. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm Barry Berman, Longview Road, former selectman. Um, I, I was actually involved in the last <coughs> police search that Bob did that, um, that hired Chief Sagala. And I want to just say that um, that process was probably one of the most intense and comprehensive processes that I've been, that I've seen in any of my time on the board. The thought that Bob puts into it and the soberness that he applies to it um, is really incredibly um, awe-inspiring. Um, it, 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 he really a applied a lot of the questions and brought in all the right people. So, and as I understand just reading from this, I wasn't involved in this one obviously, um, but just re reading the process, it mirrored the process that I was actually involved in. So um, I know that he put serious thought into it. I've had great experiences with the Reading Police Department. Uh, most recently when my son was in high school, I got a flat tire on the way to the bus and he was gonna miss the bus. A police officer came and without question, he ran my son up to the, to the bus stop, dropped him off to go to school and then came and helped me fix my flat tire. Um, Mrs. Letierio had mentioned um, a video that, a uh, documentary that my son produced behind blue lights. Um, Dave and then former Chief Sagala gave my son full access to the Reading Police Department so that he could go, on, you know, with them on ride-alongs to actually show what people, what the Reading Police Department does in this town. This is not the sleepy little town that we all, that we all deal with. These police, police officers are under extreme pressure. I, I encourage you all to go to YouTube and look for be, behind blue lights and really see what the Reading Police Department does. Um, I, endorse, um, I endorse Deputy Chief Clark to get the position. I've worked with him on the board. I know how, um, how hard okay, he works. Your time is up. Um, uh, okay, great. Okay. Oh, and just really quickly while I have the floor, I think <laughs> the RAD program needs to come back and the, and the community policing um, that Kristen Shaughnessy does needs to be expanded and okay. everybody here should take Citizen Police All Academy. All right, we will now Thank switch you. to the other side.
Is this the old guy mic microphone? Um, <laughs> my name is John Freitas. I've been here um, 63 years, 70 Howard Street, Reading. And um, I'm also a retired uh, firefighter from a neighboring town. So I'm very familiar with the assessment uh, system that is set up in, as this young uh, gentleman said to me, said to uh, the meeting earlier, the town charter states that the um, town manager uh, picks the candidate. Well, patrolmen get promoted to be sergeants, sergeants become lieutenants, and lieutenants uh, become chiefs. And when they get to the assessment uh, protocol, it's a very, very tough process. Now, we are fortunate in this town to have a gentleman that has been on the department and came out as a top candidate. So my question is, what the heck is going on here? Why are we here? He's been through the process. He's a good guy. And he's, what, 1995 uh, member? I don't understand why we're uh, standing here still going over this. And I strongly recommend um, Deputy Chief Clark to the position of chief. Thank you. Angela Binda, 10 Orchard Park Drive. Um, I have had few experiences with the police department, thankfully, but they have all been very positive, and I've only heard positive things about um, Acting Chief Clark. Um, regarding qualities of a police chief, for that, I really defer to um, the town manager and the selection committee for that. I am thankful for the very thorough process I think a very thorough process that was outlined um, by the town manager is even more important when you have an inside candidate. For me, I want to know that the inside candidate really um, rose to the top amongst other candidates. And it appears that that is, um, that is, that is the case, that even though uh, Acting Chief Clark was an inside candidate, he really was the best candidate. So that really instills confidence that this was the absolute best choice. I also want to thank the select board for their thoughtful process. It is important for them to think about this too. We don't want a rubber stamp. We want to know that they've considered this also. And even though we know they just get an up or down vote, we want to know that this was a thoughtful process. So um, I look forward to the appointment of the new chief and I'm thankful to all those who participated in the process. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Sasha Corkin. I am a lifelong Reading resident from Franklin Street, formerly of Garrett Road. I, I just want to express my gratitude to the Reading Police Department, first of all, for their patience in this process. I know it can be really challenging to be under interim leadership for so long, um, but at the same token, I really do appreciate the select board and the town manager giving us this opportunity to provide feedback. I think that this is a really important position and making sure that we have a very thorough process is, is an important one. I have had plenty of opportunities to interact with the Reading Police. That makes it sound a little bad, so I'll clarify. <laughs> um, yeah, back when I was 12, I was the recipient of one of those Friendly's ice cream coupons for wearing my helmet, and I think it's really important that we make sure that kids keep wearing their helmets. That's one thing I always worry about when I'm driving around. I see all these kids with no helmets, and I, I want them also incentivized like I was. Um, I, when I was 16, I had what I thought maybe was a bad experience with the Reading Police. I was pulled over and Cited. I may or may not have been speeding. Um, <laughs> and I appreciated that officer giving me just a warning, but then it turns out that officer also played volleyball with my father, oh. and um, <laughs> so I didn't get away with anything. Um, most recently, I can tell you that I had an awkward encounter when I accidentally discovered the 911 feature on my iPhone, where if you double click the button, it calls. Um, so thank you to the officer who did show up to my house to make sure that my husband had not murdered me. I was fine. Um, but again, I think it's, it's just really important to have these good and positive interactions with our police. I want to make sure that our new chief is going to continue that kind of atmosphere where we can have these really good relationships between the community and our police department. Thank you. Nancy, Dr. Pearl Street, and I would also like to thank the select board for having this um, possible for a hearing um, for the public, and I hope this is something that continues. Um, I'm hoping that our future police chief 
will seriously consider uh, the suggestions that have been made to hire a psychiatric licensed social worker for the police force. Um, every year we hear from uh, the police about the enormous amount of time that is spent dealing with behavioral health calls, um, substance use disorder calls, not only the calls, but the referrals, the placements. It takes them away from doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is police work. So I hope going forward, this new police chief will seriously consider that. The communities around us that have uh, actually embedded a psychiatric social worker in the police department have found that it has been incredibly effective. And that is by far, um, to me, the most um, effective community policing. Thanks. Hi. Uh, oh, yeah. Stop, stop, stop. Hi, uh, Dimitri Tsakris. I live on Oak Street. Um, I've been looking for Deputy Chief Clark. I beat him up in a RAD class uh, about 11 years ago, and it was awesome. So I find myself um, agreeing with Mr. Berman that the RAD class, if it could come back, I think would be tremendous. My, both my kids took it, my daughter took it when she was a teenager, I just think it's great. And it was fun to beat up police officers. <laughs> they were, you know, well wrapped up. Um, I do wish this process had taken place earlier in the process. I read very carefully the process of looking for the chief, and I feel it's an excellent process. But I think it is important that the public gets to hear from the old guys who've lived here a long time about the, the, who I hope will be the new chief. And I think it's important that the old guys who've lived here for a long time understand that maybe there's a different point of view, that we want to share a different experience. So I thank you for doing this. I do wish it had happened earlier. On that, I agree with Mr. Brown. Um, and my family has had, uh, this is, I'll get a little emotional. The police have been nothing but impeccable in my family's life. So I thank them all for that. And uh, the new chief, I wish him all the best. Kevin Riley, Beacon Street. And so I, I stand before you not only as a citizen of Reading, but I'm a police officer myself in a different town patrol side. We recently went through an issue with our former chief. And um, our town's board of selectmen was very quick, very quick in replacing the chief with our captain who was interim chief for only a short amount of time. I can speak of what I want for the C as my chief. He's not only looking for today to fix what happened in that part of time where we're having troubles. We lost uh, over 11 of our staff. We're only a, a little bit larger than Reading. That's going to happen if we don't have a point of chief soon. People are going to look to other departments for leadership in their town. Happy to say now he's taken over. We've replenished our staff. He's not only looking to now, he's looking to the future. I don't know Deputy Tra uh, Clark personally, but I can tell you he's risen through the ranks. He's a deputy chief for a reason. We need to get this done, not only for the citizens of Reading, but for the men and women in blue who serve this community and keep us all safe. Thank you. My name is Chris Dallas. I live at uh, Four Governors Drive here in Reading. Uh, I've lived in Reading for uh, 15 years now. Um, I just wanted to come down here and go on record to uh, say that I'm a police officer in a neighboring town also. I'm actually a uh, supervisor in a neighboring town. And I just wanted to go on record um, with the board um, with the caliber of uh, a person that Deputy Chief Clark is. And I feel like in, in the town of Reading, we'd actually be lucky to have him as a chief. And you guys should be begging him to, to be the next chief. And uh, I just wanted to go on record to, to say that um, obviously in the town of Reading, he's extremely um, well spoken of. But he also has that reputation um, in police departments, or, you know, in surrounding areas and in the town I work with. Um, I actually have, on numerous occasions, uh, supervisors in the town that I work in have actually gone to him when they get uh, come upon situations where they don't know what to do or they need advice, and they actually look to him for advice. And I just wanted to make sure that the uh, board knew that and go on record. Thank you. Hi, I'm Linda Snow Doxer, Beaver Road. I'm also on the school committee just for a little bit longer. 
Um, I want to thank the select board for this opportunity. I want to thank Bob for the thorough process for um, choosing our next police chief, whom I hope gets ratified. I really appreciate this process um, because it's been so helpful to hear what everybody wants in the next police chief and to hear the support for Deputy Chief Clark. I've worked with him on committees. I appreciate the presence in the schools of our supreme um, school resource officers. Um, I also had um, my opportunity to beat him up on RAD, and I also, and I did, um, and I also appreciated his work with my daughter when she was on that, um, did that, and that was after an incident, and he was very thoughtful um, and helpful to her surviving New York City. Um, the work that the community policing program is doing is really important, and um, I just want to say, please expand the um, bonus program for parents wearing their helmets alongside <laughs> their kids. Thank you. Oh, on the um, the Human Relations Advisory Committee and the Ad Hoc Committee, and um, Deputy Clark has been there with us. I really hope that now that he'll be chief, we'll get even more proactive, um, active, creative, and engaged engagement from the police with the human rights work that's going on in our town. It's really important, and I appreciate his commitment to that. Thank you. Do we have further comments? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Charles Stanley Moran from Vail Road. There are a couple important qualities that I think we need to see in, in our new police chief. First is professionalism and personal interactions. This is a quality that the acting chief demonstrated last week when he responded late in the meeting to an admission of error by a member of the select board. The acting chief clearly stated his confidence that Reading Police Police officers are all professionals who have much experience, experience calmly dealing with frequent negative comments. The second quality that is important is professionalism as a supervisor. I don't think there's a person in this room who has behaved ideally 100% of the time in either their professional or personal lives. It's vitally important that the chief is capable of handling lapses in professional behavior of his staff. Imagine the challenge of being a supervisor of a longtime colleague or of even someone you've mentored and then you're in the position of having to discipline them. Equally important as a supervisor, however, is that the chief is capable of helping others to get help when they are not dealing well with the stress that officers endure witnessing tragedies or facing burnout. This isn't a new phenomenon. I've known this is important for a long time. As an altar boy 50 years ago, I served at a number of funerals. I can't remember much about them except for one, when after his mother passed away after a lengthy illness, an unmarried police officer d died as a result of a gunshot wound that was self-inflicted. We need a chief who has the skills to prevent such tragedies. Best of luck to our new police chief. You're going to have a tough job. I don't envy you. Okay. The other side. My name is Cindy Damon Bach. I've lived in Reading for 22 years, and um, so I'm the newbie on the block here. Um, and I live on Gould Street. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm looking. I, I, I didn't come, I came tonight because I didn't know enough about the process and how it was only 11 days since the person was announced. It didn't seem quite right to me. I didn't expect this to be an endorsement of somebody, but a, a questioning time. And I guess, well, I am, like Linda Doxer, very um, happy this happened and uh, that I came to learn more about the candidate now. Um, I am looking for a police officer who will be asking questions. 
and listening and not assuming uh, that they know everything because they've been here a long time. That's a great asset. It can also be a problem if the person isn't listening to new concerns. Um, I am the mother of a 13-year-old, so I'm, I'm hoping that the RAD program keeps going. Uh, she needs it right now. Uh, and I look forward to uh, a cooperative um, police department. I think, I think it is. Uh, you know, when my little one was two, she called 911, unbeknownst to me. And I was very grateful that they came and laughed and said, do you have a two-year-old in the house? And I said, <laughs> why, yes, I do. <laughs> so, you know, I have had very few interactions with the police, but I am grateful they're here, that they're ready for emergencies. I trust them completely, and I hope that it sounds like um, this deputy police chief is going to be a good one, and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Do we have, yes. My name is Amy Cole, Bartlett Circle, and I as well want to just um, state my appreciation for this opportunity to hear other people's experiences, to um, know that a thorough process was done and feel confident. Um, I did feel confident um, in Deputy Chief Clark just from my own limited experience, but um, it's helpful to hear this input from others as well. Um, I also just want to share um, one experience that my family had with the police department that was really helpful. Um, I had she was in, my daughter was in sixth grade and going to Coolidge Middle School and her instrument was stolen. She actually saw the person leave the school and get into a car and her friend was um, very quick thinking and took a picture of the license plate. So she came home with this picture of the license plate number and I didn't know what to do with it. So um, I told her I was gonna call the police. Um, I felt a little guilty doing it. I feel like we should all have such big problems to, <laughs> to consume their time, but I figured I would um, give it a call. And um, she was mortified, absolutely mortified that I was calling the police. And they came and the officers who responded made her feel so comfortable, so justified in doing, you know, in letting them know. They followed it up. Turned out it was a mistake. They went and retrieved the instrument. She was so upset that the boy may have gotten in trouble for taking her instrument and was so relieved to find that they showed understanding, compassion um, for this child who just made a mistake. And I feel like our police department and our new chief should be models of that kind of behavior. All of us in this town should aspire to that kind of non-judgmental, understanding, um, compassionate behavior. We have further speakers. <laughs> are, are we all set? Then I will turn the meeting. Oh, did I miss one? No, I'm sorry, I thought I heard somebody call. Okay, Ms. Alvarado, You're all set. the floor is yours. Thank everyone for participating in this listening session. Your feedback allows us as elected officials to make thoughtful and well-informed decisions. Please know your feedback is appreciated. And it doesn't end here. The board always welcomes your insights and experiences on all town issues. Um, as there have been some questions about the timeline, I had asked Bob to provide an overview of the process timeline to date and he has kindly included that in the packet. So should you have questions, you can feel free to refer to that. Um, before we move to the vote, I, I'd like to make a short statement. As the chair of this board, I know that I am one of five people who make decisions that affect this town. My utmost concern, as we came to the conclusion of a six-month process, was that my colleagues have the opportunity to review the process and ask questions in an open meeting before making our decision. I thank Bob for laying out the timeline and would add that Bob originally had the police chief item on the February 4th agenda. With my colleagues in mind, I moved that discussion to February 11th. 
This seemed like a reasonable accommodation to allow for full participation of all members of the board. To my colleagues, I thank you all for being public servants of this town. It is an honor to serve with you. And I thank you for the personal support you have provided me. At this point, I believe we have a motion. Um, at this point, I believe we have a motion. Unless there are other statements. Oh, Anne, um, excuse me. I'd like to make a, a statement. I think actually the public has set a really nice tone for us this evening, so my brief statement may be unnecessary. Um, but I just wanted to, to acknowledge that it has been a difficult week uh, for our community. Um, I've heard from residents that their stomachs have been in knots. Uh, I wanted to let you know I'm committed to working with everyone going forward uh, to rebuild and restore community trust. Um, and to the Reading Police Department, thank you for your service to our community and for the care and for the professionalism with which you carry out your duties. Um, and to, to my fellow board members, I'd like to draw your attention to a document we were given on February 8th at our board retreat, um, which was capably facilitated by um, town staff member Jane Miller. Uh, we ran out of time at that meeting, unfortunately, to go over the document in, in any detail. Um, but that document proposed a list of rules for select board ethics and protocols. And I wanted to draw your attention to the second protocol, uh, which reads, the select board will lead by example to build trust. We agree to avoid words and actions that create a negative impression of an individual, the select board, or the town. While we encourage debate and differing points of view, we will speak with care and respect. Um, we will have the opportunity to discuss this document and establish our protocols at our next retreat in March. Um, I think this protocol would have served us well last week, and I suggest it could serve us well tonight and going forward, even before we formally adopt it. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome everyone this evening. Thank you all for coming out. This is a tremendous crowd. Um, I want to provide my thoughts specific to the police chief selection process as well as the discussion in the community about this. I don't want to repeat the, the timeline has been discussed, um, but just to follow up on uh, January 31st, each member of the board received a confidential memo from the town manager that provided a discussion of the process, a summary of ratings of candidates identified only by number, the town manager's recommended candidate, and it indicated this would be on the agenda for the board's February 11th meeting. A number of board members, myself included, met with the town manager individually at this time to discuss the provided information and next steps. In my discussion with the town manager, I expressed concern that I did not have enough information to vote on his recommendation. I don't believe at that time we'd had enough public participation in the process. And I thank you folks very much for, for coming tonight and wish that we had done this sooner. I had hoped and expected the board would in fact be able to interview finalists. Why is this important and not micromanaging? Because this is a very important decision for the community. And I believe then and do now that the best process would have been more board and public involvement. I was not advocating the board be involved in every step of the process. We had members of our board to do that. I had faith in their roles on the selection committee. But the board as a whole needed more information to make our decision. Remember, we couldn't talk to our peers on the committee about their feedback from the assessment center due to open meeting law. I expected to be able to hear what each of the two finalists could bring to the role. I envisioned a process that would have board members involved at this level so that a vote on the appointment would be more of a consensus of the board and the town manager, incorporating the feelings and concerns of the community. This type of working together would send a strong supportive signal to the chosen candidate and to the community. Some other communities use a similar process allowing for more discussion with finalists for this and other high profile positions. Though some of these ideas were discussed at the start of the process in August, I was surprised when they ended up not happening. To be clear, the charter states that the town manager appoints and the select board then takes a confirmation vote, up or down. As of January 31st, 2020, I did not feel I had enough information to do this, made this clear to the town manager. 
It was then that the town manager offered me access to some members of the search committee, and I pursued this. It would have been very helpful if board members, including those on the selection committee, could have spoken together about the process and candidates during the process. This, however, was not possible due to the open meeting law discussion I mentioned before. Also, maintaining confidentiality of candidates, especially early in the process, is critical to the integrity of the hiring process. So thus, unfortunately, the first opportunity for the board to speak about this together since August was February 11th. There was frustration experienced by everyone in the room before February 11th, on February 11th, and I think leading up to tonight as well. The process didn't work as intended, and it didn't work as well as intended. As community leaders, I think we all fell down. We didn't get it done. Given where we were, I worked, and I know my fellow board members worked to obtain more information. After consulting with the town manager, I contacted some members of the search committee and tried to get myself comfortable about a decision. I spoke with a number of people involved during the process and reached out to see what other information could help me and the public feel comfortable that the selection process had been thorough, open-minded, and addressed our citizens' questions. I expected that we would then have our public meeting and discuss how to move forward on the 11th of February. On the 11th and since then, I've come to appreciate many things. I learned of the support that the officers have for the acting chief and that they want him to take on the full-time role. I also learned of their frustration at how long they've been without a chief, as well as their concerns about morale. I know that the professionalism of the force maintained the safety of this town, and Deputy Chief Clark did a great job managing without actually being the chief. I also heard from many constituents asking why had they had not been afforded an opportunity to share more of their expectations of the new chief. I heard from many constituents who expressed support for Deputy Chief Clark and some who shared some concerns as well. I learned of citizen dissatisfaction with both the situation and the timing involved. Deputy Chief Clark and I sat down last Friday and we discussed what I would like to see in a chief, what he would like to do as a chief, and what he would need to get it done. I left our conversation feeling very satisfied with the ability and confidence of David Clark to do what is needed in and for our town. I now feel like I have the information that I need to make a decision on confirmation. I'm disappointed that we're here and that everyone feels angry and frustrated. I'm disappointed in the process. I'm disappointed that board members have made statements that have offended the police and then some that have disparaged other board members. If we can't demonstrate civil behavior on the board, it's hard to ask others to demonstrate it themselves. I'm disappointed by the vilifying of Vanessa, both at the meeting on Tuesday and since then in social media and letters to the board. Vanessa has been a strong and effective chair, keeping us on task to accomplish our goals during the year, and a strong and passionate advocate for residents. From building projects to RMLD to Daniel's house, she's been a great advocate for our town and I'm proud to serve with her. I'm disappointed that some members of our community are so angry that they're sending out hateful messages. I'm disappointed that a petition for a recall is circulating. I'm disappointed that after Andy apologized sincerely for his ill-advised comments, his motives are being questioned and maligned. I know him to be a person of character, sincere about all that he does, and his apology for making that statement reflects who he is. He and we have supported and continue to support our police and the great work that they do in keeping our community safe. Our police are engaged with this community in so many ways, in the town and in the schools. We all witness and appreciate this every day. I'm disappointed also in myself and also in my fellow board members for not stepping up to insist on getting more information much earlier in this process. We need to return to being neighbors. We need to return to being Reading, a great community that's the envy of our peers, a great place to live, work, raise a family, and continue to live in and enjoy as seniors. We need to take a vote this evening on a chief that allows the police force and the community to unite behind a proven leader. And we need to take a breath, get recentered, and continue to move Reading ahead. We have many issues in front of us that need thoughtful, honest consideration and resolution. This board is doing its best to prioritize and address these issues. 
Unfortunately, we won't be able to please all of the people all of the time. It's just not possible. But we can commit to learning from this experience in order to move forward in a more positive way. We need to be willing, almost done. We need to be willing to have calm discussions where people can bring up issues and concerns and respect differences of opinion. Though the national stage is making this challenging, we need to be able to handle this locally as neighbors. We need the select board and town manager and staff to work together to move Reading forward. That responsibility emanates from this board. We need to pledge to make this happen, and I pledge to do exactly that. Thank you. Mark, if you would um, read the motion. Move to accept Deputy Chief David Clark as the next Chief of Police in the Town of Reading. Second. Um, before we move to the vote, I'd like to make a brief comment. Um, what? You might be surprised by what you hear. Um, I don't know if, anyone, if everyone has noticed, but Deputy Chief David Clark has actually um, snuck into the back of the building. So uh, I'd actually like to address this to him. Um, Dave, I'd like to thank you for your leadership over the course of the last two years. Your professionalism has allowed the department to continue to be the reliable source of safety and security we all depend on. You and the entire department have demonstrated tremendous dedication to our community and for that, you have my heartfelt thanks. This has been a rigorous process, and you have clearly risen to the top. I have full confidence that you will lead our community with the integrity you have always shown. Thank you, Dave. Did you have a statement? I, I do have a, I do have a okay. statement. Um, I just wanted to let um, everyone know, since the board last met, I have had the opportunity to speak uh, with the remaining members of the selection committee, apart from my fellow board members, as well as two of the private citizens who witnessed the, the assessment center. I didn't have the opportunity to speak with Chuck, although I spoke with Dr. Doherty. Um, and Chuck, so I appreciate your comments here tonight as well. Um, my overarching takeaway from these conversations and from the selection com committee members was this. David Clark is the police chief and the leader Reading now needs. Um, Deputy Chief Clark has ably led the Reading Police Department during a challenging period of transition, and I am grateful to him for that delicate and difficult work. Um, I was going to read from his biography, but I'll spare you that, but it's, it's very impressive, and you can read it on the town's website. Um, he is the recipient of numerous honors and achievements. Uh, one that really stood out to me was that he was appointed in 2001 by the Chief of Police to represent the Reading Police Department in recovery efforts at the World Trade Center following September 11th, a weighty undertaking and one that could not be entrusted to just anyone. Reading has always been home to Deputy Chief Clark as it still and now is to his, to his family. It is clear he cares deeply about this community. Uh, I personally have had the opportunity to work with Deputy Chief Clark as part of the Ad Hoc Committee on Human Rights, and as Kyung Yu, another participant with us in that work, wrote to the board this past week, he was there when we heard stories of difficulties from the residents, including minorities. He was there when we strived to find ways to deal with those challenging issues. He was there in the front line of the investigation on hate-related incidents. I, too, have appreciated Deputy Chief Clark's Deputy Chief Clark's attention to these issues and to this difficult work. Uh, further, from last week's public comment and, the, and from the communications the board has received since, it is clear that Deputy Chief Clark has the respect and confidence of the men and women of the Reading Police Department. I am very pleased to support the town manager's choice of David Clark to be Reading's next police chief. Thank you.
Thank you. We will now take the vote. All those in favor? So moved. I'll keep this brief. Um, I just want to let you everybody know I was watching at home and then I did sneak off in the back because I wanted to stand back and I wanted to hear the residents talk and I wanted to hear what you had to say. I've listened. My offices are here in attendance. My command staff is here. We've listened. We heard what you have said. And we're going to continue to work forward and continue to be the best police department in Massachusetts and to give you the best service possible. I just want to thank everybody for coming tonight. <laughs> Thank you all for coming this evening. Motion. Right, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you.